Welcome to DS Trucks. In today's video, I want to talk about first time diesel owners, specifically Ford Power Stroke diesel owners, but this kind of goes with all diesel trucks. I am a first time diesel owner. This is my first time ever owning a new diesel. And even if you've had a diesel, things have changed over the years. If you are coming from a 7.3 to a new 6.7 or even a 6.0, things have changed. Uh, over the years now when you go across brands if you're looking at GM Dodge it's a little bit similar um, they share a lot of the same components I know some of the newer Dodges have kind of switched there's some variations but generally it's all pretty similar now I'm one of those guys who kind of got a diesel just because I wanted a diesel I didn't really need a diesel particularly that being said I do work the truck I do use the truck I use the towing capability the hauling I max out the gross vehicle rate rating as you can see uh, it does have a plow on it uh, if you can see that I don't know if the lighting is good enough for you to see that but it does have a plow on it I do max out the payload from time to time haven't quite maxed out the towing on this particular truck because it isn't at 450 so it has some pretty high towing but I will get there uh, if I get some bigger equipment, but there was a lot of stuff that I learned as a first time diesel buyer, first time diesel truck owner. First of all, I had no idea that about the water separator being underneath the truck and I didn't know, uh, about the fuel filters. And I want to talk about the fuel filters first, um, up under the hood, you have one. And you also have one up under the truck. Under the truck is where the water separator is. You want to drain your water separator monthly if you can. I know a lot of guys never drain them. And they're fine. But you want to drain your water separator monthly if you can. You never know if you're going to get some bad fuel. And a lot of times, from what I hear, if you get a water light on your dashboard, it could already be too late. So if you ever get that light on your dash you can actually stop the truck if you ever get that light i would stop right away and you can actually come down here and drain your water separator to see what's going to come out it could be um it could be that water's just right there and that's going to possibly save your truck if you ever have a, a fuel pump failure from contamination uh on your fuel pump which is actually down in here you can't really see it with the engine uh, with the uh, intake on the truck but it's down in there underneath somewhere in this area and if you ever have that failure it actually ends up taking out the entire fuel system now if that failure is related to water contamination then it's not going to be covered under your under your warranty and you could be looking at an insurance claim and if your insurance doesn't cover it then you're looking at a excess of ten thousand dollars maybe more to repair your entire fuel system because you're going to send contaminants when this this is like a little um little fuel pump that kind of resembles a, a miniature engine it has like a piston in it and that piston's pumping the fuel to achieve these high fuel pressures and if that ever fails and it sends metal through the system it will wipe out your fuel injectors and it'll cause so much damage to the point where you'll have to clean the entire fuel system and have it all cleaned out and it's going to be a huge mess your truck's going to be totally taken apart it's going to be a mess it's going to be extremely expensive one thing you can get is a uh, disaster prevention kit i recommend the one from sns uh, i don't have one on mine yet but i will be getting that soon that way if there's ever a cp4 failure it will be um it will be protected from the rest of the fuel system being taken out. That being said, uh, the reason that's important to know is because if you ever have that particular CP4 failure and it's related to contamination, your warranty won't cover that. So Ford's going to want those parts sent to them. And if corrosion is found on some on uh, the fuel pressure, uh, the fuel regulator, that is right on the CP4 pump. If contamination is felt, found on that, some other parts show any sign of contamination. They can tell because the metals will corrode and they can be able to see and possibly deny the claim. And that would not be good. It'd be very expensive. And that's a big issue. So that's why I wanted to talk about that. Fuel system and fuel is very important with these trucks. If you are a guy who's not driving it enough 
and the fuel sits in it for three months and you don't empty out the fuel, then, you know, guys that have these sit for a while, it might be uh, more important for you, for you to check your water separator because diesel fuel is hydroscopic, meaning that if you're not cycling your tank, if you're not cycling your tank, then the diesel fuel itself can absorb water. Uh, that being said, sometimes you can get contaminated diesel just from a uh, fuel station. So with these Fords, it is unfortunate that the design from the factory does not protect all that damage. I think they should do something about that with this design. I, I wish that it uh, would catch the uh, debris if the CP4 pump ever fails because just the CP4 pump itself is probably like a thousand dollar repair, maybe eight hundred dollar repair. But once it takes out the fuel system, that's a huge, huge, huge repair for the vehicle. So that's uh, something to definitely consider before getting a diesel. Uh, or if you already, uh, if you're looking at, if you're a first time diesel owner, it's something to know. Water separator, fuel filters, every other oil change, they need to be changed. And that can throw a lot of people off because if you're coming from a gas truck like we have right here, these, they've eliminated all the fuel filters altogether. And a lot, you'd be surprised how many times I hear the story that, hey, I didn't, I didn't realize this diesel had fuel filters. When you buy this truck, the salesperson doesn't necessarily go through and tell you all this stuff. Uh, they just assume you know. And maybe even a salesperson doesn't even know all this stuff. So uh, having a diesel is super involved. But another thing I want to talk about is the emission system. It is it is something to consider if you're looking at one of these or if you're a first-time owner. You need to be aware of this emission system. So over here, when you look at the engine, uh, basically all this stuff over here is your EGR-related system there's plumbing there's coolers and there's all kinds of stuff going on your uh, exhaust gas recirculation so i don't know exactly what this how the system works but essentially it's it's uh preventing emissions from getting out into the air uh, by putting exhaust back into the cylinder because the exhaust is going back into the cylinder this makes your oil uh degrade a little bit well degrade quite a bit quicker it gets dark quicker so the guys who've deleted their trucks and have no egr system they they actually keep the oil cleaner and it doesn't get dark real fast um not a whole lot to really think about with the egr but more so to think about with the dpf the diesel exhaust filter which is underneath the truck right here so new diesel owners you have to be aware that your truck has diesel exhaust fluid and looking under here at the DPF, you can see it right there. It looks like a big torpedo underneath the truck. And what you got to realize is the truck needs to do regens in order to keep this catalyst that's in this filter uh, f free of soot. So it fills up with soot and it burns it off into ash, some kind of a particle that you can't see so all that black stuff that comes out of the exhaust pipe is the soot gets stuck in a big ceramic filter and then it gets burned off using extra fuel so the it, the thing to really consider if you're looking at to, looking into one of these trucks is if you're not driving it far enough then the filter might not actually get a chance to go through that regen cycle and burn off all the soot so if you're doing short trips you really want to turn on your OCR, your operator command regen, which will in turn turn on your uh, screen and tell you the percentage that the filter is full or how much back pressure is on the system based on the sensors that are there monitoring the system. Essentially how it knows is based on back pressure. So if you're not driving far enough and you keep on staying at a full filter and it's not getting hot enough to do a regen and it's not doing a regen, then it could actually derate the truck and lose power and limit your speed and all this crazy stuff. And you won't be able to drive the truck effectively until you go to the dealer and then the dealer can initi initiate a manual regen. So you have to be aware of that. So short trips is not really recommended for these diesel trucks. It's really at least at minimum you want to be able to uh, drive the truck for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes at a time. If you do have short trips, 
then you want to turn on operator command regen and from time to time you want to do a manual regen and let it burn off it is pretty annoying but it is a fact of life with a diesel truck deleting the trucks now has gotten quite complicated it's a super illegal and yeah it's kind of something that we got to live with right now and it's it's pretty expensive to delete a truck so Getting into a diesel, you want to be aware of your fuel filters. You want to be aware of your diesel exhaust particulate filter, your DPF. Uh, you have to be aware that these trucks now take, um, they take uh, exhaust fluid, which goes in here. Now, with this fuel, being that these two things are right next to each other, you don't want to accidentally put your DP DEF you don't want to accidentally put DEF in your fuel tank. If you ever do put DEF in your fuel tank, do not start the truck. Um, don't even turn the key. Because if you turn the key, then you're going to cause all that water. D DEF is it's water, mostly water, but it's uh, got some other things in it that do some other things like urea or whatever's in it. But the point is, it's mostly water. And if you send water to your injectors and to your fuel pump into your cp4 4 pump then you will cause great damage to the truck and you'll have to pay excess of ten thousand dollars or have your insurance covered and ford will not cover death on the uh ford will not cover death on your if there's death found in your system and death will be in the system and it'll be very obvious that death has caused the failure and it won't be covered on the warranty so diesel fuel you want to get quality fuel you want to avoid and you want to never put death in your fuel tank even though they're right there a lot of people accidentally put death in their fuel tanks specifically when there's fleets of trucks and there's employees involved and employees they tend to make a lot of mistakes and they don't always pay attention so you know for a big fleet of young new employees i wouldn't recommend diesels but some guys just want a diesel. I'm one of those guys, guys. I could have gotten away with a 7.3 gas or a 6.2 gas. I mean, it's not going to do, it's not going to be as uh, fun or whatever, but it would do it. But I just, for whatever reason, wanted a diesel, wanted to try it. And it's been a learning experience. So, covered the DPF. We covered the, the uh, fuel filters. The oil, the oil change itself is uh about the same amount of work just to change the oil now the fuel filters need to be done every other oil change which adds a lot more work to the job and a lot of money to the job but the actual oil change itself is not really harder but it is more expensive because the diesel oil is more money and you need 13 quarts versus just seven quarts so almost double the capacity of the gasoline so more money more quartz more waste oil to get rid of um but other than that not particularly harder to do you can crawl right, right up under either one of these trucks without lifting them up and you can service the oil um the oil filter is about 25 dollars on a diesel versus the oil filter on a gas which is like I don't know, 13 or 14 dollars. So just overall more expensive. But these diesel trucks are a lot harder on the oil compared to the gas. Diesel trucks just they put the soot into the oil. And if you're doing a lot of idling, you're gonna see your oil life monitor just chew through the oil life. It's gonna require oil changes even quicker than gas trucks. So a lot of idling is not good for these diesel trucks. And the problem with a lot of idling is you need heat in the cylinders to get an effective burn to not to not cause washout in the cylinders. And when you're idling in the cold and it's not hot outside, you need to high idle the truck so that there's enough heat in the combustion chamber to actually not cause damage to the cylinders. And you'll see that if you're idling this truck and it's cold and it's winter, you're going to see the actual heat in the cab diminish because the truck is actually not making enough heat in order for the HVAC to even warm the truck so you have to turn on your high idle that is turned on on this truck and essentially essentially to turn on your high idle you've got to wire to your upfitter switch my upfitter switch is number one I believe 
and when you start up the truck and you press in the brake and you hit number one the idle turns up as you can see mine is set to like 1100 rpm you can set these higher but uh check out power stroke tech talk his youtube channel and he can show you on his channel how to actually install a high idle on a truck so things to, there's a lot of things to consider um, when you're looking at a diesel truck how are you going to drive it uh, if you're going to short trip it maybe it's not a good thing if you are going to short trip it maybe make sure you turn on operator command region go to the dealer if they don't know what it is you'll have to print off some publication because a lot of times when you go to the dealer they don't even know what OCR is and then they'll charge you an hour like uh, maybe a half hour to actually put their computer on it and program operator command region so that you can monitor your diesel exhaust filter and you can do your regions now if you're an over the road trucker or hot shot guy you don't even need to think about OCR because your truck's always hot and it's uh, always gonna uh, get into passive region and it's not gonna be an issue but for guys like me who daily drive one of these trucks uh, yeah you gotta understand operator region so those are some key points for first-time diesel owners or guys who are new to diesel Ford diesel trucks a lot of this stuff crosses brands a lot of this stuff applies to your Cummins and to your Duramax it's just a different brand they're all pretty similar they all use similar components like the CP4 or CP3 if you have the newer Duramax I think they went back to what's called a CP3 but all in all guys this is DS trucks thank you for watching my name is Sean see you in the next video this is my first diesel and comment below what kind of diesel truck or what kind of truck you have or you are looking at but anyway thanks for watching see you in the next one over and out